Rocky Top Insider instant reaction to Tennessee baseball's 7-4 win over Texas A&M here Thursday in Hoover at the SEC tournament. An elimination game for both teams. Balls come out on top over the Aggies bouncing back from Wednesday night's 13 to 4 loss to Vanderbilt stay alive here in Hoover. Ryan, it was you now there's a little less to talk about today. Last night was super unique from Tennessee taking the midweek pitching approach in an SEC tournament game. Tonight they did their Friday approach with Chris Thomas, AJ Kazi Stack and you know things went well for Tennessee Cavars Tears had a great day at the plate going 3 for 4. It was more of your typical Tennessee baseball game tonight. Yeah, I mean on the mound it was business as usual. I think that's what probably stands out the most is Stamos and Kazi, that stack's been really good for Tennessee, and this is probably the best offense that it's faced uh, yet ever since Tennessee started doing it, and things once again went really, really well. I thought Chris Stamos had maybe his – probably his best outing of the season, it felt like to me. He gives up the, the one solo home run with two outs and two strikes in the third inning, um, but besides that, it was really, really effective against, again, like we just said, a very good Texas a and lineup. Three and a third innings pitch was his longest outing of the season. So that was all good. And then, yeah, Kazi uh, just kept it going. It felt like business as usual for him. He was really effective. And then uh, at the plate, it wasn't a massive game for this Tennessee offense, but it felt like a lot more competitive at bats up and down the lineup. Uh, and then, like you said, Kavar Steers, the big night. Two extra base hits, three run homer, a single that he hit really hard off the wall. Uh, so just a, a really impressive showing for him. And he was certainly the, the main guy for Tennessee's offense this afternoon. Yeah, that single honestly probably should have been a double given how hard he hit it, but it kind of bounced right into the, you know, ricocheted off the field right to the right fielder. So Texas Sam got a little break there as it was only a single. But KT, really big day at the plate after striking out three times on Wednesday night. It was a nice little bounce back for tears. But you talked about Stalmus Kazi stack. You know, Kazi only pitched 68 pitches tonight. It was probably on a little bit of a pitch count, nothing too extreme. But five hits allowed, two earned runs allowed for Kazi. He continues to excel in this relief role. Yeah, no doubt. And it felt like, you know, he comes out with one on and a runner on a runner on first and one out. And I guess what was the eighth inning that you, you just said the pitch count was at 68. Is that right? 68. Yeah. And it feels like this is an NCAA tournament game. He would not have come out in that spot and he definitely would have gotten out of the, out of the inning. And you know, that's a little bit of a generalization. Kirby Cannell gives up that run he inherited. So it, to me, it felt like Kazi was even better than the numbers indicate. And his seven strikeouts uh, was just one off what his high has been coming out of the bullpen this season, uh, which was last week against South Carolina, he had eight. So he just keeps on cruising, and it feels like he's as valuable as a weapon for Tennessee on the mound as anybody right now. And, uh, he, you know, as Tennessee's offense kind of slowly stacks some runs, he did plenty to, to give them, you know, make it pretty drama-free for the balls in this one. Not a ton of storylines to take away from tonight, but we've talked about it a lot so far just here in the three and a half minutes we've been talking. But I thought it was interesting you talked about how Texas A&M is the best lineup Chris Thomas has faced in the starting role since they changed to the Stom Kazi stack. With his three and a third outing tonight, or today I should say, I keep saying tonight, but it was today, and probably the best he's looked so far since he's become the game one starter for Tennessee. Also, given the fact that we saw last night that the bullpen depth maybe isn't as strong as Tennessee probably hopes entering postseason play. Tennessee's going to rely on Chris Damos to do something like this, three and a third, be really consistent and, and really crisp as he was tonight and efficient before giving way to Kazi. Yeah, it goes both ways. And it's a lot of what we talked about yesterday where on the end where if things go poorly, like Tennessee doesn't have a whole lot of room for error and one bad outing or, or one pitcher not doing their job and not being able to eat as many outs as Tennessee plans on, that could have big effects on, on a regional in Tennessee's pitching. And then it goes the opposite way, too, where if someone, especially like a Stamos, who may be, you know, typically I think Tennessee wants to get six to nine outs from him, somewhere in that range of the expectation, he can somehow push and get more than that. That also could go a long way because it gives some other guys a little bit of wiggle room and room for air. So uh, it would be really important, and it just feels like, He's pitched really well down the stretch, and for him to do it, and I thought Tony Vitello made a good point, and he didn't really know the answer to it either. So, and we I haven't looked at it in the 20 minutes since Tony got done talking. I get Cal. I can't imagine Stamos had a ton of postseason experience. So, for him to be in a big stage in an SEC tournament game uh, and perform well is uh, again it's still another Tony Vitello phrase. It's another box check for Tennessee's pitching staff. 
really solid day for Christian Moore. Three hits on the day after going 0 for 4 Wednesday night against Vanderbilt. Cal Stark also left the yard, 382-foot solo home run he had late to kind of put the icing on the cake for the 7-4 win. We talked about Kirby Cannell, who relieved A.J. Kazi. Maybe wasn't his best, far from his best, really, in, uh, in, that relief hole, in that relief role. We've seen Kirby make back-to-back appearances now in Hoover. Looking forward, Brian, Tennessee will play Friday night against the loser of Vanderbilt and Mississippi State, which will take place here at Hoover Met in the nightcap tonight on Thursday. So they could face Vanderbilt again, or they could face Mississippi State, where they haven't faced all season. Tony Vitello confirmed earlier in the press conference that your beam will start, and I feel like we'd expect Aaron Combs to kind of piggyback after the beam start. Definitely, and I thought it was interesting that Tony said that you know they didn't want to pitch Combs today. They, they felt like it would be pushing him a little quick, which is where he when he threw a bullpen early in the week. So uh, that you know made even though Kirby wasn't his best or super efficient, just the fact that he was able to eat those outs really important and didn't let this one get too too dicey. Which you know probably one more hit in the ninth inning that would have brought the tying run to the plate and it would have gotten a little dicey. So yeah, it'll be beam and comb combs tomorrow i think that makes a lot of sense uh a duo you got to feel good about and no matter who tennessee plays you know both mississippi state and vanderbilt played on tuesday so it'll be their fourth game in as many days and as we've said on this podcast a number of times this season when talking about tennessee's pitching a lot of people have the same issues as tennessee with their pitching staff or staff with the depth uh concern and those especially vanderbilt we saw their bullpen struggle against tennessee in that series a few weeks ago so both those teams have those concerns and you know, Tennessee goes into this one with probably their most reliable starter or their most reliable pitcher in Drew Beam, who you know is going to eat a lot of innings, might not be dominant. And then the, the relief guy in Aaron Combs, who's been probably their most dominant pitcher the last six weeks of the season. So you do that compared to what they're going to be seeing for either Mississippi State or Vanderbilt, which is going to be a little bit of a depleted pitching staff. Uh, I think it's a really, really positive sign and a reason for optimism for the balls in this one. We'll finish on this, and we talked last night about how you know Hoover is not necessarily the most important thing in the world, and if Tennessee goes 0-2, it wouldn't really matter in the long run. But I do think it is important for Tennessee to at least get one win, which they did today, so that Drew Beam can get some innings under his belt this weekend, so that Aaron Combs can get out on the mound a little bit. And if Tennessee's trailing tomorrow and the game is maybe out of reach, I think we also see Xander Seacrest maybe get an inning. So the fact that you know Tennessee can get – the other pitchers work who would typically get work on obviously game two, game three of series. I think it was important for Tennessee to at least get one victory here in Hoover. Yeah, it's, you know, how important that is, I'm not really sure, but it, you definitely would rather have that one. And it's the whole debate this week is, you know, the SEC tournament is typically the rust aspect, uh, how much, uh, how much action those guys might have to throw if you make a deep run. But the other side of that is, you know, rest. If there's too much rest and you have too much time off and you're a little bit, you know, you're out of your rhythm. It's the same same way Tennessee, the reason Tennessee kept things. They didn't want to push their pitching plan up because they didn't want to get out of a rhythm. Well, if they'd lost today, they would have gotten out of a rhythm with Drew Beam and, and you know, it could still happen with Xander Seacrest. Um, obviously, Nate Steed got in yesterday anyway, so he won't have that quite as much. So, yeah, it's definitely helpful for Tennessee. And, They'll continue to, to work through, and instead of having guys just throw bullpen sessions this weekend to stay fresh, they'll, they'll continue to get some game action and, and keep that every week routine that they have they ha- have had. Well, that'll do it for this Rucked Up Insider Instant Reaction Show of Tennessee Baseball's 7-4 victory over Texas a m Aggies eliminated Ball Stay Live here in Hoover for Ryan, who is all the way across the wall here, correct? A little behind-the-scenes action. Ryan and I doing the podcast on the same wall, but... You know, you got to make it work in Hoover sometimes. Tennessee made it work today. We're making it work after the game. But until next time, we'll see you in Hoover.